Why don't you come on down to Mantiques and meet some friends of mine? Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Live at Mantiques with me, Diego. A show where I interview musicians that have inspired me a lot. Today, I have my first music teacher, Mr. Jason Webster. That's, that's right. How are you yeah. doing, Diego? I'm good. How are you? I am. I am. I am. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's uh, what we are thinking of asking here. I was really sure. I kind of like making stuff up. Okay. But like, uh, mm -hmm. I just... Uh, I, I wanted to bring you on because, yeah, I, I did realize this a while ago, is that you were my first music teacher when I wanted to learn guitar. You were five years old, I remember that. Yes. And, and much, much smaller than you are now. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and now I, I play uh, drums and bass. And I'm sure he still so, plays a bit of guitar. Do you still bit, play I, a bit? I play a bit of guitar. Actually, I got back into guitar recently. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, I got um, an SG for Christmas. Ah, so I've been very cool. Down on I that. thought I saw a picture of you with that. Yeah. It's very, uh, very frank. Yes. Which very, is yeah. nice. Yeah. But I'm all about Zappa. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so how did you get into music? Well,. I'm not sure I exactly remember. Uh, I was very young at the time. Uh, I think it was an escapist thing for me. I mean, my, my parents, my siblings did music, but it was always part of a larger thing. Either they were singing in church or they were involved in a, a theater production. Um, <clears throat> so to them, it was always ancillary to a, a larger project. And for me, as soon as you know, I kind of discovered somebody's old Led, Led Zeppelin records. It, it turned into a thing on, uh, in in and of itself. We still don't know who bought the Led Zeppelin records. Mm -hmm. I think it was my mom. She never admitted to it. <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah, I've, I've I've known you for for like ever. I've known you forever in playing with my mom's band. So, um, <laughs> I, can you talk a bit about that experience? Well. I still remember meeting your mom at the wrong place for a gig once. And then the news was, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant. Yes, <laughs> that, that, that was the big one. That was the, I, I kind of remember you making your uh, appearance that way in, in the form of pregnancy brain. Ah. Uh, <laughs> which was a very cool thing. And it's like, hoo hoo, here we go. We're starting on our next for, you know, our next phase of life here. Mm -hmm. Which was a very cool thing, which we've all kind of done that together. We've all been kind of lucky in that way, in that we've all been around for each other to support each other as we get older, too, which is yeah. very comforting yeah. in its own strange way. And there's awesome things that happen, like Diego. Like Diego. <laughs> Diego's pretty awesome. I know it. Nice. Uh, and where to next? So that was that, and that was that recollection... I, I was going to ask you at some point, when did you kind of make the move to drums? When did I make the move to drums? I'd say that was about, look at me, and now I'm getting interviewed. <laughs> oh, how the tables, the turntables have turned. So, you know, um, I started getting into drums uh, probably when I was about seven, so probably about two years after the guitar thing. And um, I think that was just kind of... Um, I don't, I don't know why I made the switch. I was always like, I, I really liked Frank Zappa as a kid because every kid loves Frank Zappa, and I was always just uh, wanted to be, I wanted to do that and be a guitarist. But then I was like, wow, drums are pretty cool. I can hit stuff with sticks all the time. I can be loud. That that and Zappa stuff is so complex with. Oh yeah. I mean, that's what really speaks to you when you listen to it. Yeah, and I, yeah. I mean, Zappa originally started off as a a, a drummer. Oh, and, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, and he was in some earlier bands. He actually got kicked out of the band because he played the cymbals too much. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was funny. Uh, but yeah, yeah, when you you know you talk about Zappa, it's like all about the drummers and you, you know, like uh, Chester Thompson, uh, Ralph Humphrey, uh, Terry Bozio, of course, oh, yeah. Vinnie Colaiuta. Uh, I already said Chester. Uh, Chad Wackerman, oh. greatest drummer name ever. 
Chad played with Zappa? Yeah. Oh, I from eighty one to eighty eight. I, I remember him playing with Chick Corea. I thought Wackerman, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Wackerman if I'm thinking of the same guy, yeah, yeah. The, for the acoustic band, I thought it was. I might have mm-hmm. to go look that up real quick. Not sure about that. Right. But the name the name's familiar. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, what else were we thinking? What of else? Today? Where do we go from here? Um, so, I, I, I've heard I've heard stories. I haven't really talked to you about this, but um, stories that you've pl- you've played with some rather large musicians in your day. Well, Greg Allman was really tall. He was at least a good six 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 seven, probably two hundred pounds at least. Um, who else? Yeah, Warren Warren Haynes was also a very very large person. If I remember that correctly, uh, who else really surprised me? Yeah, actually, Jamo was a little smaller than I thought he would be. He was probably just six foot two or so, or just six two. right around six foot. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 can, uh, who else do I want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, we did. Uh, I still remember one summer that was a great package tour with uh, with Arlo Guthrie when I was doing stuff with Arlo, um, that was John Sebastian and Richie Havens. Uh-huh. And Richie was also very large. Very large. And, and <laughs> literally and metaphorically. <laughs> um, he was just a huge presence. And I was just so thankful to this day for that summer to just even be around those guys. Uh, Richie was just so positive. He just made you... No matter how bad of a day you were having, he just made you want to live and yeah. live big. Just, just that personality is, and he was such an energetic player. And John Sebastian was such a scholar. I, I think he was the only, only musician I did gigs with who honestly, straight up yelled at me for missing a chord. In one of his songs, I, I played an A major seven as opposed to a, an A minor seven for one of his songs. He caught it straight away and just yelled. Guitar oh, I take that semi, back. Right? right? Take that back. Larry Coryell was another one. I had one. I was getting the qualities of the chords wrong, and from somewhere we we're doing a gig at B Pack with him. From from just out in the darkness, I just hear wrong chords, Jason. You're playing rock and roll. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> and then, then I had Larry Coriel come up and just show me the straight rock and roll guitar part for for Sleepwalk, and I was I was trying to be all jazzy about it right. at that time, and that was the wrong approach to take, and he let me know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, let me ask you this: What are you listening to in terms of music these days? Anything new? Well, I can't seem to escape. Is, is it 10,000 gex, 100 gex, or 1,000 gex? It's something, mostly the stuff my kids are listening to, ah. at the most part. That's what's playing on the TV. Um, my son has discovered my vinyl collection. Ah, which so is rediscovering all that kind of stuff again? Yeah, so, and yep, I get to hear all of that all over again. Hmm. And I don't know if it's aged well or not. I still have to think about it. Um, I think it was Amy Mann uh, a few years ago that said in an interview that this is probably the best time to be a songwriter ever, just because you can throw it out there and it's instantly available to everybody. Uh, So I've also been hearing Weekend Friends, Phoebe Bridgers, just a lot of great songwriters that are out there that my kids are discovering. So I find myself just listening over their shoulders to their phones, more or less. And Phoebe yeah. Bridgers has some great stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I can't even give you a, you know, I'm she, listening to my kids' phones. I, I believe yeah, Phoebe Bridgers was on SNL uh, a few weeks ago oh. as the musical guest. That is awesome. And and so that's the only place I, I know her from. I am, like, painfully bad when it comes to knowing about modern music. <laughs> <laughs> but it is out there, floating in the interwebs. Yeah. All right. So, what say we jam on a tune? That sounds awesome. We'll be right back. And we're back after that spectacular interview. So, we're going to do a little music for you. What song are we playing? It's called Storm's Not Gonna Stop. 
otherwise known as the storm. Was 
fun. We will catch you next time. Jason Webster, ladies and gentlemen. Diego. Thank you. Good <laughs> ciao. Why don't you come on down to Mantiques and meet some friends of mine?